I thought today we would sit at this desk instead of showing off my face because um, we don't need to see that every time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hello, this is Jenny Fern, and today I would like to talk to y'all about my first year gardening and my experience with growing squash. So I have some representative squashes here. Um, seeing as these are foods that can be used to store through winter, they're a good um, food to actually be able to show even during uh, fall and winter. So let me get my little seed packs out of the way and I can start talking about what I grew. So first let's talk about this one. Let me move my big pumpkin. I'll put it over here. So, um, squash. <laughs> I, um, had never grown squash. Um, as a kid we grew zucchini, um, and pumpkins. And I don't remember anything else. I do remember for pumpkins building up little mounds. Um, and I think that was because they like to have their roots, like, warm. I think that's what I remember. Um, but for this year, for my first time growing all these different types of squash, um, I decided to just give it a shot and just give it a go and see what came of it. So, one of the first squash plants that I had growing very, very successfully was my... Um, shoot, what is this one called? Sorry, let me look at my seed packs. Ah, it's this one. It is Burgess Buttercup Squash. And this was something that I'd heard about through YouTube um, as a highly recommended squash for its flavor. And so I decided to give it a try because I'd never heard of it. So I got the seeds from my Gardener. And, um, as you can see on this, there's like this little kind of, um, like, um, uh, just like a really pleasing light blue color here. Um, this little cap, this is kind of where the flower forms, um, and it leaves this little cap on here. So on this one, it's a very small, you can see, and this is where the flower was on the squash plant before it, you know, became giant. So the, my experience with this plant was very positive. It grew incredibly vivaciously. Um, the plant got very, very big very quickly and kind of overtook one of my garden beds and uh, sprawled to all, all corners of, of the, um, of the little garden bed area and um, started producing these guys um, relatively quickly and they also matured relatively quickly and so I had these earlier in the season than any of my other um, winter squash varieties. Um, they are delicious. Um, they're difficult to cut actually. They're kind of difficult to process because of how large they are. Um, and so like cutting it in half, for example, can be kind of challenging. I'd say that's one of the drawbacks. And peeling them is not the most fun thing in the world. Um, but the flesh is delicious and, um, the seeds are nice as well. So, that is this variety. I do recommend it. Um, and I only had one plant. I think I got maybe kind of a lot of these guys, maybe like five or six. I was just looking up um, how many acorn squash you could expect off of a single plant because I only had two and I was wondering what was actually normal because that's the kind of information that I really just don't know how much of it is me, you know, maybe not providing enough nutrition to my plants versus how much is, that's just what the plant does. But yeah, this, um, I think we have a couple of these left still, despite eating them while they were 
um, kind of produced earlier in the season. So that's this guy. Okay. Next I'm going to talk about zucchini. This is the one summer squash representative that I do have. And I did dehydrate some zucchini so that I could use it in soups and stuff um, during, during the winter just because zucchini is such a prolific plant that you can, um, you know, you, you can't feasibly eat everything that you get off your plant as it's producing it. So these are the seeds that I have from my survival gardening pack that I got these from, and uh, they're just the Black Beauty variety, kind of common variety, and um, the plants produced a ton of zucchini. So the very first plant that I had on the side garden was put in there relatively early, and it, it got like quite long. Um, the zucchini plant grows as a, a bush type versus the, um, the buttercup squash, which is, um, a, um, like a vining spreading type. The bush type will kind of grow like a long stalk and the leaves and the fruit come off of the end of that. And so I actually had two, eventually, different ends of that plant, one that was producing um, small, somewhat, somewhat smaller zucchini on this end, which was like the root end, and then over on this side was kind of as the plant was progressing, this end was also producing uh, fruits. So uh, it was a solid, solid performer the entire um, season through, and I think sometimes we had some issues where it was um, kind of uh, not each zucchini would make it all the way. Um, some would kind of, uh, kind of yellow and wilt, um, midway through maturing. And I kind of think that some of that is that there were too many fruits maturing at once on the plant. Um, if any of you know exactly what that is, you could let me know what to look out for. Um, and then, at some point, I planted two additional zucchini plants in the front yard, um, <laughs> which, at the time that they started producing, I was like, oh good lord, this was a mistake, I don't need this much zucchini. <laughs> um, yes, I don't know, it's, I think it's well known, but it is definitely true that zucchini is very, very prolific, um, and I really highly recommend it. I also think it's a great idea to store some of it. Um, and the chips that it, you can make from it dehydrated are actually really kind of delicious. <laughs> like if we don't have any chips at home and I want something to snack on, these are like great. <laughs> um, they don't even have any salt on them or anything. So um, I, they, I had the two plants in the front and um, I'd say one started doing something kind of annoying where uh, I'll use this as a prop. <laughs> so if you have like a zucchini sticking up like this in the plant, then um, it'll bulk up towards like the stem and it will be kind of narrow um, and it won't have as much mass at the end of the zucchini. So you can get some dumb shaped zucchinis and they can start rotting down on that end because you're not picking it because it doesn't, it's not like full, you know? Um, so I had some of that problem on that plant uh, particularly. And then on the other plant, I think I got some sort of, um, some sort of infection which was affecting the leaves of the plant. They were kind of bubbling and also paler. So at some point I got some sort of I don't know, fungal infection. I, I really, I have, <laughs> because I wasn't really doing very much to the plant um, in terms of production, I didn't even look it up. <laughs> but I was just like, oh, something's wrong with this plant. Um, and yeah, I got um, kind of like bubbling, um, like kind of welts on the leaves. 
that were a lighter green color, and then on the actual zucchini that, that were produced, they would be very bubbly and lumpy. And um, they were still fine to eat. At least, I think they were fine to eat. Um, I ate them. And um, so that one, I would say, was the, the most concerning of all of them. And then all three of them uh, I took out before our first frost, the day before our first frost, um, so that I wouldn't have to deal with gross, wilty plants. Um, but they produced right up until that point, and there were plenty of squash um, the entire time. So that was really, really awesome to have that vegetable as an option, like, every single day, pretty much to have that as an option for what to use in a meal. Um, I'd say if you grow anything, um, growing like cherry tomatoes and growing um, zucchini is just uh, kind of game changing um, for a home garden, especially the amount of space that a zucchini takes. It is not that much. <laughs> like you could grow this in your front yard and pretend it's like an ornamental shrub or something. I don't care. Like uh, just put them wherever <laughs> you can because um, they will feed you. So that's my recommendation. <laughs> and um, I didn't actually get to save any zucchini for seed. So this is not that many seeds, um, which is a little bit concerning. So I will make it a point next summer to uh, set aside a plant um, that I will get seed off of right away, just so I don't run out of time. Okay, next, let's talk about these three, because these three are kind of the duds of the collection, that's <laughs> what I would say. Because, um, well, the, the acorn squash, I only had one of them. Let me show you as well the seeds for that. It is um, Table King Bush Acorn from M.I. Gardener. And I feel like just appearance-wise, I mean, obviously this is quite orange. Um, but it's not very big, it's not very full, and the other squash that I had, um, while being more green, uh, was also the same general size. Um, the plant that I had, um, being still like a bush type, um, it had nowhere near the same amount of vigor as the zucchini plant that I was next to, and um, yeah, just generally kind of struggled and uh, didn't produce a ton. So I love, I love acorn squash. Um, they're just, I don't know, they, I like them. <laughs> I like to prepare them because you, you can cut them um, into half rings and bake them on a tray. And um, I just like eating them that way. Especially you like grate off just the outer edge of the rind and then you still get something kind of to chew on, <laughs> so. Um, anyway, um, they're yeah, kind of disappointing. I think I'll just plant, uh, more, obviously, in the future I'll just plant more plants knowing now that you can't expect a ton from them. So. Now, this winter luxury pumpkin, uh, was the only pumpkin I got off of this vine, and this vine, again, did not do very well. I think it, it must have been too hot or too dry or um, something stunted the plant early on. I think same with, same with all of these, honestly. I think they all must have been stunted in some way early on. Like maybe I just didn't water enough when they were young plants. Um, so this is this winter luxury. Obviously on the package they <laughs> look much more <laughs> substantial. Um, and the reason I got this one uh, is because it's just very, very, pr it's, well, it's pretty on the packaging. <laughs> In reality, it looks kind of strange. Um, and it's supposed to be good for pies and it's supposed to be like very, uh, delicious, um, I guess. So... 
Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, I don't really have that much to say about this one, except it didn't really do very much at all. Um, and I haven't tried it yet, because this is the only one that I have. Uh, but it isn't also that much to do anything with, so. Anyway, kind of disappointing, but I'll try again next year. This. I have no idea what this is. I don't think it is a, um, I don't think it's a buttercup because it doesn't have that same thing on the bottom. And I had every squash that came off of the plant looked like this. It was the same size. It didn't mature any more than this. Um, and when I ate one the other day, I ate one with my other, <laughs> my other acorn squash because I was like, well, let's fill up one um, baking tray with squash and I used two of the smaller ones. Um, it does have orange flesh inside and it was tasty, but um, I have no idea what this is. I don't think I have anything that would produce this, um, but I did have saved butternut seeds um, that had been scooped out of a store-bought butternut but I still don't know if that would produce this. So I don't know where I got this from. It doesn't taste bad, so I don't think it's bad. <laughs> but um, just kind of surprising, very small. I don't know. I don't know what this is. <laughs> um, but I did get a few of these. I got maybe four or something. Um, it wasn't the... it was kind of disappointing. <laughs> Um, and then we have the butternuts. So, as you can see, this is huge. Um, the butternut squash, I planted a lot of them because, I'll show you my seeds. This is exactly how I stored the seed, in, but just in a big, um, the big plastic bag that I used to store all of my home saved seeds. I stored this in there, just like this. <laughs> So you can scoop out the seeds of a squash, right, and um, save them um, and plant them. And so I did that from one store-bought butternut squash. And um, at the time, uh, before I had a garden, I also did the same thing for a Kirkneck squash, not knowing um, anything about the difference between summer squash and winter squash. So I'll go through that. So zucchini is a summer squash because you eat it while it is produced in summer. And um, the seeds, like here you can see like a little seed, they are not mature when you eat the fruit because the fruit itself is not mature. Um, so crookneck squash is a summer squash, it's not a winter squash, and so the the seeds inside it are not mature, and so if you try to plant those seeds, they're not viable. So, just, just so you know, you'll want to save your seeds from a mature squash, like a butternut, if you want to get anything from it. So you can't save seeds from a zucchini from the store, for example. So, oh yeah, so anyway, because I had all of these seeds and I didn't pay for them, I was very generous with planting butternut squash, which means I actually got a, quite a lot of butternut squash. Um, I didn't realize until, you know, growing the butternut squash, that you don't really get that many per plant. The plants grow quite long, they're very viney, but they, um, they only produce maybe like, I don't know, three squash per plant, something like that. And so I planted, I don't know, 10, something like that. Um, maybe like four in the front yard, two in the raised beds, maybe two on the side yard, something like that. And so now I actually have quite a lot of butternut squash, which is great because I love it. It's very delicious. Um, it stores well. And uh, <laughs> now I have way too many butternut squash seeds uh, to ever 
need to buy any butternut squash or butternut squash seeds ever again. <laughs> so that's great. Um, and then I'm hoping I'll get squash that is better and better acclimated to my specific climate. And I'll also get better and better plants. Um, so like this squash, for example, is quite large. So I'll want to save seeds from this. I also had a squash that was while well, being like, maybe like, I don't know, it's still a pretty good size. Not as, not as far around as this one, <clears throat> but a good size, but it had, it only had four seeds in it. And so I want to try to plant that one again and see from that if we get very fleshy, uh, flesh heavy uh, plant with little seed. Um, Cause that might be interesting. So I'm excited about that. And then we have this sugar pie pumpkin. I'm pretty sure that's what this is. I looked up just before this video, I, I Googled sugar pie pumpkin to see if that was the variety that I'd grown. Um, because looking through my seeds, I feel like that's the only thing that could explain what this is. I was like, is this a sugar pie pumpkin? <laughs> has to be some sort of buttercup cross. I don't, I have no idea what this is. Um, anyway, this is, actually, this is very funny. If you want to know, again, how incredibly inexperienced I am, uh, if you watch the August garden tour that I posted when I was doing Vedia, um, there was a plant that I had no idea what it was um, that was near my orange tree because there was no fruit on it. And that was actually a pumpkin. <laughs> it, it grew huge and it grew a lot of pumpkins. So that plant grew uh, this huge pumpkin and it grew two other pumpkins that reached maturity before the frost. And then by the time the frost was coming, I was tearing out the vine and I discovered like four more pumpkins that were hiding in my grass <laughs> that I hadn't cut because the pumpkin was crawling through it. So anyway, I was very surprised. So I'm definitely gonna try to grow the pumpkins earlier so that they have enough time to produce, you know, something before the frost. So honestly, this pumpkin, I'm very proud of. It looks beautiful, <laughs> I think. Like, I mean, it's just perfect. Like, this butternut and this pumpkin, like, you could feed, you could feed a family with this. <laughs> so I haven't cut into any of my pumpkins yet. Um, and I'm excited too. I was gonna bake a pumpkin pie from scratch um, for Thanksgiving, but that didn't happen. Uh, I did make butternut um, squash for Thanksgiving out of one of my butternuts, but I didn't do um, anything with the pumpkins yet. But I have to, because it's beautiful. So anyway, the pumpkin, uh, these seeds are from that survival uh, gardening kit again, and it grew just incredibly vigorously. Um, I was worried about it at the beginning for quite a while because it seemed like kind of at the root where it first grew, it um, was struggling a little bit um, and was kind of dried up and it was only, um, I don't know, I guess it found it, 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 the vine wove its way into the little patch of grass that we still have in the front yard. Um, and maybe it found better access to soil there and started being able to put down roots further down on the plant and then just went crazy. That's my, um, kind of going hypothesis at this point. So, anyway, crazy. I think that's it. I think I didn't grow anything else, <laughs> squash-wise. Um, for next year, I have some more squash and pumpkin varieties. I don't have any more summer squash varieties. So we're gonna have to stick with these zucchinis. So I'll grow 
a couple of zucchini plants again and um, hope that that all goes well. Should go well. And definitely, definitely growing several of these um, and several of, of the butternuts again. Um, these, <laughs> I'm definitely going to grow more. I'm saving seeds from these, by the way, to figure out what the fuck this is. Um, <laughs> like, really, really please, if you know what this is, if this is something and I just, like, lost a seed packet or something, please let me know. I don't know how this happened. Um, anyway, <laughs> if this is just, like, some not fully ripe something. Um, I don't know how that would be, but if it is, just please leave a comment. <laughs> um, yes, that's it. I'm excited to grow pumpkins and squash. Um, I'm getting really excited about this whole corn and squash thing that I'm going to be doing in the summer. Um, I found with reviewing the crops that I grew in the summer, I'm getting more and more excited about summer gardening, even though we're deep into fall and winter gardening, um, where, because in the summer I was like, oh, I wish I could grow, like, arugula again, and, because all that goes to seed incredibly fast, um, I was like, oh, I just wish I could have some nice kale, um, and all that, and fava beans, I was like, oh, I would love to have fava beans. And, and now I'm like, oh, corn and squash. <laughs> it's a never-ending cycle, you know, with the seasons. Um, anyway, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this. And as always, thank you for watching.